How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is September 6, 2021. Figure 4 online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. And we have a... This is the first time that we've been together, except for, you know, um, on I think since, uh, I mean, either this weekend, in a long, long time. Yeah, the the last time would have been... Wasn't it Jericho Cruz? Yeah. The last time we saw it each other. Jericho was Cruz. Jericho yep. Cruz, yeah. Yeah, it was a... Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Let's move on here to the show. So, <laughs> uh, a lot happened tonight. We'll just... Uh, we won't bury the lead, or whatever the term is in uh, in news. So, we had the debuts tonight of Ruby Soho in the Women's Battle Royal. We had the debut of Adam Cole, yes. who they kind of teased was going to be the big surprise at the end, but in fact, he turned heel immediately. And thus, we needed a baby face to close out the show, and it was, in fact, Daniel Bryan. And Minoru Suzuki. And we had Minoru Suzuki. We'll get to him later. But the three big long-term ones here. Yes. I don't think Suzuki's going to be working weekly on Dynamite and No, Randy. no, no, no. Three, three full-time signings and one guy for a brief feud with John Moxley. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, they all debuted, and uh, we got to hear from all three of them in the post-show press conference. Well, you talked to Adam. I talked to, to Adam Cole there for a while as well, not part of the press conference. But uh, at the end of the day, the story is, it should be abundantly clear. People are happy. I've never seen more happy people in my life. They well, were. Ru- Ruby was really happy. Ruby was super happy. Adam Cole was super happy. Daniel Bryan was happy, but he was, he was we'll talk about him in a moment. And uh, Tony Khan was over the moon. Oh, Tony Khan was ridiculous. He was. Like, he, was, it was yeah. he, he said it was like one of the one of the greatest nights of his life. Actually, once he, he said, said it was the greatest night. L- at late, one, late, point. Late, one time he said that. Later yes. he kind of qualified it because you know other things that had happened in his life. But but yes, he uh, he did at one point say it was like the greatest night of his life. Yeah. So uh, uh, very quickly, we pretty much knew all three names were coming. Yeah. Uh, the Brian Danielson thing we had heard was going to happen tonight. Ruby Soho, it seemed obvious because of the, the yeah, women. in 21st spot. Yeah. I think, and, every, uh, I think look, everyone in, the, I don't say everyone in the building knew, but they were chanting her name before the graphic even came. There was actually only two chants during the women's match. One was for Ruby Soho. And the other was Tessa Blanchard. And the other one was half the crowd was chanting, we want Tessa, and the other half loudly chanted, no, we don't. Well, it wasn't, I don't think it was over overwhelming in the sense it wasn't like it was the whole crowd it, but it was like it was pockets. yes it was I pockets was, yeah but i was down on the floor and you could very it wasn't it wasn't every it wasn't like the whole building but there were there were many people chanting i and, mean it was it was certainly loud enough but yes. it, but but it, the the people like you know we want tessa and then like that the people just shot back no we don't yeah which was really interesting because that's that's kind of a, a metaphor for tessa right now because i know people in that company who who want Tessa, and I know people in that company who know we don't. So that's an interesting thing. So during the press conference, uh, the interesting things, and actually not just the press conference, but when the show went on off the air, uh, Brian Danielson did a promo. And uh, it was interesting because a lot of the people who have come to AEW, including CM Punk, would be one very notable uh, example of this. Uh, nothing good to say about where well, Adam, he was. Adam, Adam Cole had nothing bad to say. About he didn't either. He, he didn't either. But but he but, he was not like Danielson in the sense that Danielson was very clear that this was a very difficult decision for oh, him. Oh, I, I can tell you, and this was a yes, very difficult decision for him. Um, he went both ways, and he said that there's a lot of people there that he loves. He said they're like family, and then noted that, in fact, many of them were family. Well, yeah, John Laurinaitis. Yes, John Laurinaitis, who's the guy whose job was to sign him, yes, among others. Yes, that must others. have been an awkward uh, family yeah, yeah, dinner. Yeah, I mean, not just him, but, you know, Vince and everyone. I mean, Nick Nick Khan. I mean, that was a... Yeah. Dan, Brian Danielson was a big deal not to lose. But at the end of the day, and it was a tough decision for him, but he made this decision, um, I don't know how long ago, but... Um, I, I never did get an answer on, on how long he made the decision. He didn't say, and uh, Punk didn't really say either, but both of them did say that one of the turning points for them it was, was when uh, when Brody Lee died. The Brody Lee show. Well, Punk, it was it was the fact that they kept the secret. Yes. Danielson was the Brody Lee show. Yes. Okay, because I do know that. That was a discussion point that we had. It was how, you know, he thought the Brody Lee show, as we all did, was one of the greatest wrestling television shows that there's ever been. Yeah. 
and uh, and Punk was just very impressed that it was a it was a private medical uh, situation, and many of the talents knew about it. Yeah, and they all respected it and didn't tell anybody about it. And he was very impressed with that. And they both mentioned that as one of the things that they were really impressed by. But uh, you know, we don't really know when exactly everybody signed. Um, well, at, we do know with Adam Cole, it was like in the last. You know that was put together at the last minute, basically. Adam Adam Cole signed today. Okay. Yeah. But but, but he had made but, an agreement. But he made an agreement a yes. couple. Of, I and mean, if you if you know anything about something. Adam Cole, I mean, there's no one in professional wrestling that will not speak to his professionalism. Yes. So if he says well, he's going. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing with Adam Cole is is that you know he did stay that extra couple of weeks. Yes. You know to to finish up because he he's and he said that he goes he has so much respect for Kyle O'Reilly he didn't want to walk out without putting him over on the way out on the big show so he stayed for the for the big show and then um the thing with adam cole which was interesting because we've obviously in the last couple of weeks talked about his situation many times and it seems like he felt like we did i mean it, to to him this wasn't a debate you know it seemed like he was just like he'd been watching this and his he didn't know his contract was up until he thought it was december but even then i think he thought he was going at that point and um you know it was he'd already you know it, it, it didn't act like i went back and forth or anything like that he said he you know i you know he said it was a pretty easy decision and he he, he talked a lot about the twitch thing i don't think the twitch thing um i didn't get the indication the twitch thing was the decision maker the deal breaker i got the impression that um but you talked to him more than me i didn't talk about twitch no but i mean as far as the decision um you know it it, it's the right decision for him, and I think we could all see from the yeah. Outside. And everyone, everyone in the in the press conference, I mean, Punk, Brian, uh, Adam Cole, Ruby, they all mentioned the exact same thing, which was they love the freedom that they are being afforded here, as compared to and no one, no one, well, I, Punk, I'm sure, is, Punk, Punk's is, not, would not it, have would, been the slightest bit happy. Yes, with them. but I mean, everybody else was. Uh, at least Cole and and Brian were, well, and, were and complimentary with, in many yeah, ways. Yeah. Well, with, with I mean Ruby, it wasn't her call. Yes, they made the call for her. You know, which ended up being probably you know the greatest thing because she said this was the greatest night of her career. She said it was the greatest well, night I mean, of her Adam, career. Actually, she Adam said Cole, nobody I, had. She said nobody had ever chanted for her before. Which yeah. that can't be right. When she was no, in the right squad, no one's ever chanted. Not at this level, for sure. Never. Uh, that I mean, caught she, me off guard. She might have gotten a chant at shows. I'm sure she did, but sure. not not at this level. Yep. No. So yeah, they're they're all in, and uh, I we didn't hear commentary, so I'm not sure everything's been announced for for Dynamite. But I'm sure that Dynamite or Rampage this week, we're going to hear from all sorts of people but well, Rub ruby's gonna be on dynamite yep. i have um you know they didn't announce anything for danielson because they couldn't because yep. you know that that was the last thing but i would presume that danielson um he should be on something this week yeah um he i mean he really should be on on wednesday night and i i would presume that yeah he, i mean i think he has to be on wednesday night so ruby won the battle royal so she'll be facing Britt baker and they have never wrestled before this will be the first time ever i didn't know that yeah, yeah they uh they've they've worked together in certain places but but i think ruby was always more her mentor and they never actually had a match mm -hmm. so this will be the first ever match and then adam cole has joined the elite which which, which makes sense. sense obviously yeah yeah uh, Daniel Bryan's babyface, CM which, Punk's which he baby had to, face. which he had to be. Yeah, uh, Punk beat Darby, and it turned into a very good match. Yeah. And it 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 seemed like when Punk first got in there, he was uh, it felt like he was getting his bearings, but by the end of the match, it was like he was back. I thought he did a very good job. He he was fine. He was good. Um might have gotten tired a little bit yeah. i don't know somebody somebody actually brought that up in the press conference was kind of like whatever <laughs> this is a very it was a very awkward yes. spot but, but they, were, I, they were rating his match and uh talking about how he had been blown up and he began I, laughing uproariously and I, then went to the next question i i didn't i didn't i wouldn't call it blown up i was you're closer than me but i i he didn't look like he got all that tired at all i, I yeah and was, i've seen guys get blown up yeah well I mean, it wasn't big but i thought he might have gotten tired but who knows whatever um yeah, it was a really good match. Um, I mean, the, as far as the matches go, the the cage match just blew the show away. I mean, that was 
you know, that was, I think it's the best cage match I've ever seen. I, I still can't come up with a better one. Yeah, I was I was uh, second row, and I watched the match, and I knew going in that they wanted to have the greatest cage match of all time. Yes, I knew and that too. And when the match first I, started, I, I was watching it, and I was thinking, there's a cage here, and I know they're not going to do anything stupid off the cage. And they didn't do anything stupid nope, off they the did, cage. they did they exactly did. what we thought, which was Phoenix was going to go off the top, and they would catch him. Yeah. But other than that, there was nothing stupid, but... So that, 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 do, that destroyer off the top rope was pretty crazy. Yeah, but when you do a, a tag team cage match you can't do anything to the outside yeah you can't build to a hot tag because it's a tornado match right and so when the match first started i thought i know this match is going to be awesome but that is a high standard to want to have the greatest cage match of all time with what could be construed in this match as limitations well compared, fact, compared, to, compared to their usual match there yes were, you know i mean if you if you there's a lot more latitude and leeway and crazy stuff that you can do in the ladder match that they did two years ago. And that was a pretty high one to live up to, which, you know, they're two different matches. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought, um, I mean, I thought there's just some absolutely amazing stuff in this match. I, I thought that it was uh, the best cage match I've ever seen. It was one of the best matches in all of AEW history. Oh, yeah. Got to be top. They top more near the top, yeah. Their asses off. The fans were going crazy for this match. Now, what was the spot? There was one spot in the match um, where everyone gave Phoenix a standing ovation. Do you remember that one? I feel like he, that happened multiple times. No, but there's one big one where the whole place exploded. Like It's like like something that you almost never see that kind of a reaction in the middle of a match like, like. there I, th I think uh somebody was on the rope and he did like a springboard into something but it was on the guy you weren't expecting him to do it on i can't remember what the spot was i do remember the spot where where you expected nick and phoenix to do something i think that with um with the other guys right yes and then phoenix did the hurricane run and on i think nick. he did it to that, nick. And that, that may have been the spot it may have been the spot it, yeah. it was something that was spectacular but it was also spectacular in a way that you didn't see what was coming yeah so i think that's what it was but anyway uh the other thing to note is uh john moxley faced kojima and they had a very good match very good match yeah. and i think that a lot of people were underestimating uh kojima i don't know why not not ability wise i think that there was the question of how over would he be to this audience and also ergo how over would we more suzuki and hiroshi tanahashi to be this audience, which we knew tanahashi would be and we knew suzuki would be yeah and it was weird because like in the kojima match he did some of his spots and he did the chops in the corner and then he went to do his 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 scream and nobody chanted nobody chanted along. It. yeah so i'm like man they don't i mean they they, they, they know, know the guy they know the they guy. don't watch him a lot okay but they knew the chops but they didn't know when they were supposed to say the one thing yes yes that's right but then when suzuki shows up I mean, they were singing his song. Oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. knew everything to do with Suzuki. The whole, oh, everybody, Gotch Pile Driver. You yes. know, you can hear the whole audience, Gotch Pile Driver. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, Moxley beats Kojima, and then afterwards, they hit the music for Minoru Suzuki, and he came out. That was one of the biggest pops of the show. They went crazy for Suzuki, and he gets in the ring, and they do the stare down, and he, I, I thought they were just going to have like, people come out and do whatever but he takes his jacket off and they start doing strikes back they're, and they're, forth. they're throwing the elbows to each other's head yeah they're smashing each other and then uh finally uh he hits the sleeper he hits the gotch pile driver he lays the guy out he stands over him place is going crazy and they announced that wednesday wednesday in cincinnati they're doing the match in cincinnati moxley's homecoming he gets his match with suzuki yep and uh so he was he was bugging us to go to cincinnati on wednesday well i don't think we're gonna go to cincinnati on wednesday but we're i not. would i bro if i could go but to we're cincinnati watching it, on wednesday i would be there <laughs> yeah. because that match is going to be unbelievable in cincinnati. I, I, i've seen that match before and it is an it incredible was fantastic match. Yeah. yes Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.